Andrew Hooper here with Home with the Hoopers. Also have Matt Wilkins from Future Solutions up in Indiana. Uh, we're going to kind of talk briefly about the system that we have on our Montana and kind of what we're doing uh, as far as the solar setup, the batteries, and, and, and the entire you know capabilities of that system. So I'll turn it over to Matt, kind of do high level. Yeah, so this rig has 1,700 plus watts of solar on the roof. There is eight Battleborn batteries, so 9,600 watts uh, of potential energy. Uh, it's a lot of power. Yeah, it is. It's 120 amps of solar charger, and then there are two Magnum hybrid inverters, so you can produce 6,000 watts of inverter power, so the entire coach is inverted. Um, you kind of, when you're getting into solar systems, people talk about, oh, well, I can run my air conditioner off of solar, or, or what can I run off of solar is a question I get a lot. And you can't really run anything off of solar. If you don't have all three components, it, it doesn't help. The way to think about it is to think about it like your gas tank or your automobile is the easiest way to do it. So the Battleborn batteries are the fuel tank, uh, the inverters are the motor that's driving you around, and the solar power is the filling station that tops off the, bat the battery bank. So um, if they're not all matched up, it doesn't do you any good to have, you could have 4,000 watts of solar, but if you don't have a big inverter or you don't have a big battery bank, you're wasting most of that energy. Same thing goes if you've got 5,000 5, watts of battery, but you've only got a 100 watt solar panel and a small inverter, you don't have any way to use that power. So yeah, you can be off grid for a long time, but you can't run anything that's in the coach. So. Is there a recommended ratio of solar panels to batteries and kind of what you would want to see there? It, the way I try to explain to people is usually on solar, you want to over commit on solar because we're in North America, so we're not down along the equator. We, we don't get a full amount of sun. Even if you tilt the panels, which is some work, um, you're never going to get 100% efficiency out of the solar panels. Um, so I tell people to go bigger on the solar than they need because you're just going to use that energy. You know, this morning at like 9, 10 o'clock and you're putting in 250 watts. Um, if your bank was half the size, you'd put in about half of that amount of power. So the larger you can go on the solar. In a, in a so game, roughly double or? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I try to do. You got to look at the amps and you got to look at the wire sizing and there's some other things that go into it. Most people, it comes down to real estate and what you can actually fit on your roof. So you can go over top of stink pipe vents or small vents, but you've got to watch. You don't want to be right next to an air conditioner. You don't be right next to a TV antenna because if that gets shaded, it blocks the solar panel and that will lower the output. Yeah, you said wire size. That's something that's important too, just from a safety perspective. A lot of the, the rigs aren't, you know, they may be pre-wired, right. but they may not be pre-wired for what you want to actually put on top of the rig. And right, so you have to look at the rating on the back of your solar panel and that's going to give you, it's going to tell you the watts that it puts out, but the one you need to look at is look at the amps um, and then make sure that your wire rating is rated over top of whatever amount of panel that you have. So on a rig like this, where most of the panels are running at 35, 40 volts, somewhere in there, um, and you've got about eight amps coming out per panel, three panels, that's 24 amps of DC coming down at, at about 35 volts. So what you end up is with an MPPT charger, actually two of them in this one, in this rig, uh, you can convert that down to 12 volt so the wire gauge coming down stays around a 10 gauge, everything underneath it. Um, you'll have a six gauge going into the actual batteries because we've converted the amps into a larger rate. Now, so. now you said MPPT, um, that compared to the PWM controllers, why one versus the other and is, is kind of the PWM the entry <laughs> right. level or? Yeah, so PWMs work fine, they're pretty durable, but they're basically just a switch. And, and what they do is they allow the energy from the solar panel they put it down to the battery voltage and they connect the two together. So if you look at a, if you have a 160 watt panel that runs at 20 volts, okay, and it puts out uh, eight amps at, at 20 volts, it's gonna lower it to the battery voltage, which would be 12.5, so now it's gonna be eight amps at 12.5, so it's only gonna put in about 96 watts instead gotcha. of. So when you do MPPT, you can go to a higher panel voltage, which helps with the size of the wire, but it also converts the energy a little bit better. There's a, there's a lot of other things, um, voltage loss over wire length runs that you need to be considerate of, fusing and that other stuff. The MPPT chargers just tend to work. There's a lot of people on the internet that'll tell you it's 40% better. You'll see a lot of marketing like that. In our experience and all the testing, it's probably 25 to 30% better. There are times of the day where it's, it's way ahead. It's quicker than a PWM, 
but there's really nothing wrong with the PWM. It's durable. It's just it's a smaller system. Gotcha. AT&T is a little better. There's a little more technology in it. Now, from a, a system like we have, what maintenance on on anything do we need to do? Obviously, it's lithium battery, so right. there's no maintenance there. What about solar panels and cleaning them? Does that make a difference? So you can, yeah. The I will tell you one thing: when you're out in Arizona in the summer and the panel gets to 175, 200 degrees on the glass temperature, don't throw something cold on it. <laughs> um, you can they'll shatter. Um, I tell people clean them, just water and wipe them off. Um, there are a lot of cleaners that'll leave a residue, and once you get done wiping it, then they'll want to attract dust more and more. I'm sure there are some people that have, you know, in groups like this where they've got the the recommended cleaner uh, to use on them. But it's just wipe water and a cloth, wipe the dirt off of them, and keep them clean. Um, and then in a dusty environment like this, where you've got traffic coming around, they can get pretty dusty, and that'll affect. I mean, you can you can knock 10 to 15 percent off a solar panel's efficiency real quick with a bunch of dust on it. So, um, as far as the batteries go, there's not a whole lot of maintenance with the lithium batteries. It's certainly not like what you'd see with a lead acid battery. So they don't gas. Um, they don't need equalized. They're not. They are temperature sensitive, but it doesn't affect them the same way that a lead acid is. So the maintenance is really just. It's a house bouncing down the road. Check your connections and make sure that everything, nothing's loosening up over time. So from a, a solar package perspective and, and, and an energy management system, is uh, obviously lithium's the top of the list there. Is it better to go to flooded AGM if, you, if you're not at that point where you're, you can invest in lithium? Or what's the... The flooded and AGM, AGMs are a little bit better than flooded. They don't gas. They've got some things going. But again, if, if it's me, if I've got a good bank that's lead acid, I'd wait and I'd save my my time to get the lithium. You, a couple things that most people, when you look at a lithium battery and it looks similar to what a regular lead acid is, you got to remember it weighs about a third and it has about two and a half times of the capacity. Yeah, so on capacity you have uh, your your flooded in the AGMs, you're able to use roughly 50% of its capacity right, that's, right. that's marked so out there. What all the batteries have an amp hour rating on them, so if you've got a lead acid battery and it says it's good for 220 amp hours like a lot of the 6 volts are. Um, so you're only going to get half of that energy out of it. So it's really only rated for the usable energy at best is going to be half of that rating. But the way batteries work, as the voltage, as the amps come out and the voltage goes, it kind of, it's called Pukert's theory, and it just kind of falls off a, uh, in a gradual weight, and it, it, they, they diminish their capability the lower the voltage gets. So in my experience, a lead-acid battery is worth about 40 percent of what a lithium battery is. Um, not all lithium batteries are rated the same, so check that out. Um, what you'll run into is the Battleborns that are in here, I have confidence that I can pull 100 amp hours consistently out of every one of those batteries because they're that's what they're rated at. They're, they, they, have, they want you to use 100 percent of the battery. Some batteries that are out there will say it's a 100 amp hour battery, but the last 10 percent is the safety inside the battery, so you're only going to be able to pull out about 90 percent of that. It's there's just do your research on that. There's yeah. a lot of marketing that goes with uh, with batteries. The Battleborns we've had nothing but success with the Battleborn batteries. And they've been great to work with. I mean, uh, I know they they work with Keystone a lot. Obviously, they they supplied us with ours. Um, and they do some other rigs as well as part of their their partnership programs. But I mean, they've been phenomenal to work with. Every single one of their team members are responsive and kind of the same with y'all in, up in Indiana. Right. Solutions. Right. And I'm not. We're not a. I'm not. A, I don't work for Battleborn, but um, uh, we're a inverter and an upfitter and we're kind of brand agnostic as far as that goes um, obviously you can see i'm wearing a magnum hat but, um, so one thing i one thing i want to say is as, as more and more more and more people get into lithium and get into solar and some other stuff is do your research on uh, bms's or battery management systems um, we like the battleborn because it has an internal one inside the battery i'm not a fan of uh, external BMSs just because external BMSs it just gives you a cord and that's a length of wire that something could happen to in between and, and we don't recommend them we don't install anything with an external BMS so. gotcha. and you being from the kind of the energy management system of in the solar spectrum of the of the market obviously we're out here in quartzite and there's tons of different rigs with setups it's kind of neat to see oh yeah what everyone does for their solution I've seen everything from a marathon coach with an actual wrecked Tesla battery in the storage compartment and 4,800 watts of solar on the roof down to guys that just have, you know, the remote setups with a couple hundred waters that they hope nobody steals, <laughs> you know, so. So from a future solutions standpoint, what's next for y'all? What, what do y'all, what can y'all help 
the community do, and, and, and if someone has questions, who do they go to? How do they contact y'all? So you can contact us. Um, you can either, my name's Matt Walkins, and it's uh, Matt W at futuresalesrv.com. Um, Josh Atwood is kind of running the show at, at FSI Solutions. Uh, we have an Instagram page, which is shocking that we just started that, so <laughs> I'll give that up to you guys for helping us get along oh, yeah, with that. Yeah. Um, social media is kind of new to us, even though we're into the electronics and power game, so that's a new thing. Um, we do we do upfits in Elkhart, but we also sell products. We rep for Victron, for Magnum, for uh, uh, yeah, precision circuits, energy management systems, and stuff like that. Uh, your battery guard autos, your lithium bims, stuff like that. So. But, we're a growing company, but mostly we're just kind of out there as a resource to the RV industry. So, so anything and everything you need, you can yep. you can get from them. Like I said, they it was a turnkey setup, pulled the rig in. They spent I don't know probably <laughs> I don't know four or five days on yep. it, just going over everything, making sure everything was right. The wires were were, were, were gauged right. We had all the security and, and and all that in place. And we've like I said, we've been on the road for only well, a couple of weeks now, and it's been phenomenal. Had had zero issues. We're running air conditioners and microwaves. Laundry, washer and dryer, um, it's it's phenomenal. So, with future solutions and and kind of the the market, you know, obviously I can go on to Amazon and just buy a kit. Um, how do y'all differentiate yourself from that type of market, and, and what do y'all do extra to, to make sure a person has a I guess a custom setup? Right. So when a, we do everything from uh, truck campers to big buses, and so one of the things we do, and it's kind of it can be a little bit annoying for the for the customer when they come in, is like the first day is basically just us looking around, figuring out where the wires go, and doing planning on what we think will work best for the customer and how they're actually going to use the rig. So we don't just, oh, you need to have this inverter, you need to have this much batteries, you need to have this much solar. Well, it doesn't do you any good if if you're a person that's used to being plugged in, maybe you don't need that much of an inverter. If you're if you're really going to boondock and you're going to live in this BLM land, then we want to size everything accordingly and figure out what loads you want to run. Rig like this, everything runs off of solar, but or off of the inverters and the battery. The entire unit is inverted, but not everybody needs that. Some people just want to be able to run a microwave when, without having to start a generator, or watch TV without having to start a generator. And they'll do like a sub panel. Yeah, and so we'll just do a little sub panel, invert a few loads, and then you're not then you're not into it this deep. Maybe if you want more, a lot of people after they get a little bit of taste of that freedom, they're like, okay, well I want the whole thing now. Now, now give me everything. So that's that's one of the things we do is. We just don't push a product out there to get yeah. it. I mean, some people, like I said, the Magnum Energy um, inverters, we put in a lot, of, a lot of things, and some people are tied to other stuff. Or we're agnostic as far as that goes. Is we're not trying to really force you into anything. So. Yeah, I remember when we pulled in the first day, it was basically opening up every compartment, pulling off the walls and the storage bays, looking where everything's at and saying, okay, I've got to fit these three different things. You know, what makes the best placement from a, a wire standpoint and length and, and space? And, you know, they're thinking about heat and, and obviously, you know, the, the safety side of it. So it, right. I mean, it was literally one day of nothing but planning, and you got the, the whiteboard out there. Yeah, and you're the marking whiteboard. Up There's like three whiteboards on wheels, and that's what we use for basically all of our tech and drawing on it and figure out where we're going to go from there. And then, then it's a lot of math involved and, and, and sizing. And then, you know, John and Nate and a couple of the other guys get to the fun idea of crawling through the unit and actually pulling the wiring. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, I know one thing that that Josh was pushing. I think John was as well. What's the official name of a system like this? I think it was an advanced advanced energy system, is what we would call it. Yeah, it's the solar gets all the bells and whistles. Everybody talks about solar. The buzzword. It, yeah, and it it kind of gets it, but the solar is just it's literally a component of an actual system. Like I said, you can throw all the solar in the world up there on the roof, but if you don't have a way to get that energy back out or how to store it when the sun goes down, it's not going to do you any good. So. So one other thing we did with our system, uh, and it was kind of in support of where we're going in our traveling lifestyle and depending on if we're needing power and, and traveling and that stuff, is getting an extra charge from the truck. Kind of speak of what y'all did there. Right. So your truck, this truck, you've got dual alternators on this? I've got a heavy-duty alternator. You've got a heavy-duty alternator on this. So most people have a bargeman plug that they plug into, and you get a little bit of current, maybe 5, 10 amps or something like that. That's basically uh, a 7 pin for the uh, on, on your 7 pin. So what we did was, with the heavy duty alternator, we ran a fuse off the alternator, fused it and ran a one aught wire all the way to the back into what's called, we call them an Anderson connector, but it looks like a forklift connector. And then ran the wire inside the coach, 
to a precision circuits uh, battery isolation manager that's set up for lithium. And what that does is it monitors both sides, the, the house batteries in here and then the battery in the truck, the line coming from the truck. And since they run at two different voltage levels, what it does is it opens up that connection and allows the truck to charge the batteries. And it'll go 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off. Um, and basically the reason we do that is is because a bank like this or a lithium battery will take all the power you can give it and we really don't want to overload an al alternator. You can really quick. I mean, if this thing needed full charge, you could put 400 amps to it if you wanted to. So it'll take whatever whatever you can give it and we try to limit that to save the alternators. Yeah, I was driving down the road the other day and I, I just pulled up the, the Victron controller, you know, that kind of shows everything. And I think we were putting in 80 amps. Yeah. Yep, and so you can expect that, and that'll be 80 on, 80 off. So, but it's that's a good, safe way. You're driving down the road. The idea is that when you get to your destination, your batteries are full when you get there. So by having a big charge line coming off the truck, which I recommend pretty much everybody do that if you're going to travel, um, you can pretty much assure that after a five, six, seven hour drive, you know you've thrown another 400 amps yeah, exactly. into, into your rig. So. No, that's one of the things that we just do, just kind of a nice safe, he's got pictures of it, you'll see um, there's just a connector in the back of the truck that plugs in and comes off the fifth wheel. So Yeah, it works great, yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little, yeah. Little, it's little extra touch to, it, to be able to extend your stay. It is, it's a good addition and a lot of a lot of people, you know, are, are going away from the traditional generator setups um, that are in the rigs, going to the little portable Hondas or Yamahas or something like that, or the what you keep in the back of your truck. If you've got that line coming off your truck, that just is basically filling up your bags. Yeah, I've got a, a Honda 2200 watt that I use kind of as a backup, and haven't had to use it. And we've been we've been pulling basically whatever we want whenever right. we need it, and yep. uh, you know the systems satisfy those needs. So. Any final thoughts of, of future solutions or the solar industry, where we're going? No, not really. This is my first trip out here to Quartzite, and this is crazy. I'm an Indiana guy, so I've never seen so many rigs and people just campfires and hanging around yeah. and enjoying themselves so it's fantastic well thanks for coming out and uh, again appreciate everything that you and the team did on the unit it's it's been a phenomenal and, and we, we wouldn't have it any other way yeah thank you i really appreciate it it's awesome great. thanks for watching keep cool home with the heapers bye 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 bye